In this video, I'll be showing you how to use the analysis ribbon to manually quantify your image. So if we're here on the analysis ribbon, we have two options for adding boxes for quantification. Uh, we can use the add rectangle or the draw rectangle. Now the add rectangle is a more automated function where all you have to do is click on your band and it will draw an area around it. And the same holds true for, for an ellipse if you have a somewhat circular object that you would like to quantify. Now if I click the add rectangle right here, I just simply come down to my band and click and it will draw the box around there for me. Now if you have a two color image, it will place that box in the same location in both wavelengths, as you can see right here. Uh, now if you have proteins that are of different molecular weights in the two colors, it may be a good idea to uh, do them independently of each other. So because if I am in the 800 channel right here and I use this add rectangle to draw a box right there, it does not show up in the 700 channel. Uh, but you can, in this particular case where I have proteins that are of the same molecular weight, I will do these together. And so all you have to do is just to keep clicking through here and it will determine the size of the box for you. Now, if you need to go back and edit these, you have to get out of this add rectangle mode uh, either by clicking on the select button right here or pressing the escape key on the keyboard. And from here, if I want to edit these sizes, I do have to switch over to, uh, to single color so that I can adjust uh, the bands or I can adjust the boxes that way. Now the size of the box does not matter. You don't have to worry about uh, these box sizes being different because the way the calculation is done is independent of the area of the box. Uh, but you do have the option of copying and pasting the boxes or you can also do this add selection which I'll show you here in just a moment. Uh, a little bit more of a manual way to place the boxes is to use this draw rectangle. Just need to get rid of those first. And with the draw rectangle, again, uh, just like with the add rectangle, uh, if I'm looking at both images simultaneously, it will place the box in the same location in both wavelengths. So if I draw the box right there, again, you will see that it shows up in the same location in both wavelengths. Now, if I want to, uh, like I said, you can copy and paste this box. Uh, using the copy and paste functions, or we do have the option, what is called add selection. So with this box being selected, if I click on add selection, all I have to do is to click and it will paste a copy of that box uh, wherever it is that I click. And again, if I need to move or resize the box at all, I do have to go back to the select mode. And from there, I can then position the box, or if I need to resize it, I do have to go to uh, single color to be able to resize these boxes. So once you have the, the boxes in place, the next thing you have to do is to check your background subtraction method. And the way that you do that is uh, right here under background type. Now the default setting is median and you can choose the border width on here. Let me zoom in just so I can show you a little bit about what's going on here. Uh, the area here between these two boxes is what is being used for the background subtraction. And that is determined by this border width. Now you can also set which sides of the box you want to use for doing the background subtraction. In this case, if I only wanted to quantify this lower band right here, I would be concerned that this upper band is in my background area right here. The way to get around that and to account for it is if I were to set this to be right and left hand sides only. So now when I click save, you will see that that background area has changed and now it's only using the right and left sides of the box for that background subtraction. Now in a case where you have uh, very little separation between your two lanes, it may be a better idea to set this to be top and bottom only. 
That way, adjacent bands would not be getting into your background area. If you would like, uh, we also have the option of using a user-defined shape. And the way that you do that is draw a rectangle somewhere on your image and then assign that as your background subtraction method. And then it will use that single value uh, for the entire image versus the local background settings, which uses the area just directly around uh, your area of interest. If need be, you can also rotate these boxes. So if I highlight that, uh, we have the, right here, we have the, the rotate option. And you can see that it will rotate the box. So if you have a little bit of a smile to your image, you can uh, rotate that so that it encompasses the entire uh, area of interest that you need. Uh, here under the show group, you can turn off various items. You can have labels on here. You can have the quantification shown directly there. You can turn that local background off and on like that. Uh, you can have certain text. Uh, you can also, if you click on the options here for the show group, you can position where you want the uh, display or where you want the quantification to be displayed. And so you can choose that for the different colors. You can set the 700 to one location and the 800 in the other location or in, in another location. You can uh, set a rotation for the text. So if you would like uh, your quantification to be at a 45 or 90 degree angle, you can have that set right there. Now, this is only for new boxes. Uh, if you want to, ha if you want to edit boxes that are already in place, if I turn on the quantification right there, if I highlight all of these, I can right click on the selected items and choose the label angle. And then I can angle it like that. If you set it here under the show group, it only will affect new boxes. It will not change anything that is already on the screen. So the data are on here under the shapes table. And what you are going to be interested in is the signal value. And so signal is what you're going to use for any of your data analysis. So signal is independent of area and it is background subtracted. So uh, signal is definitely, definitely what you want to use uh, for doing your analysis. If you would like a quick view of your data, we do have some charting functionality in the software. So here to the side uh, where it says chart, if I click on that, what I want to do is I want to choose a, uh, a shapes table or shapes chart. And you will see that uh, all of the data are plotted here uh, on this chart. And if you would like, you can export this, you can save it and uh, take that into uh, some other type of document. So if you have any further questions, please uh, consult the help directory. Thank you.